Well, now, now with D.A. Bragg, on the other hand, in your fair city, um, dropping, sending evidence back to, to witnesses, obviously, he's dropping the case. This is insanity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have any thoughts on what it might be, John? Yeah, this is a great country if you're a rich white male with power because there's no accountability. Nixon got to go watch Met games the rest of his life. Yeah. Everyone involved in Iran-Contra, which was the greatest scandal of my lifetime until the Iraq war, they all walked away clean. Everyone in the Iraq war, only person lost their job over that was Bill Maher. Uh, so I'm not surprised to see Donald Trump walk between the raindrops and not be held accountable. But, you know, for a year and a half, we have had him on tape yeah. demanding voter fraud from the Secretary of State of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And it's just there. We've all heard it. He did it. I mean, the evidence is in. Look, I don't really care anymore about Donald Trump because I don't think he can hurt us that much. I don't think he can ever be president again. But after what I've seen this week, I got to tell you, I, I, I hope he does run. I, I, I have a lot of liberals mad at me for saying this, but I hope Trump is the nominee because I think an indicted Trump or a post-January 6th Trump is probably the easiest possible candidate for Joe Biden to beat in 2024 when he will be 97 years old. Right. I mean, even Biden, um, number four, Chris, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have a problem running um, against Donald again. Here's yes, what he I has don't to say. think you'll find any European leader who uh, thinks that uh, I am not up to the job. Um, and I mean that sincerely. It's not like, whoa, it's that's that. The point is that when the first G7 meeting I attended, like the one I did today, mm -hmm. was in Great Britain. And I sat down and I said, America's back. And one of the one, one of my counterparts, colleagues, the head of state said, for how long? Mm -hmm. For how long? And so I don't blame I don't I don't criticize anybody for asking that question. But uh, uh, the next election, I'd be very fortunate if I had that same man running against me. See, even Biden's Biden, like, bring it on. Yeah, Biden beat him, beat him by four points in a poll this week. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think that at this point, all Trump can do is tear the Republican Party apart the way we're seeing him do with Mo Brooks, with Liz Cheney. I mean, 100 GOPs, half the GOP House has just signed on to host this fundraiser for Liz Cheney's opponent. And they're all trying to kick her out of Congress because she told the truth. Right. My fellow liberal, please let Donald Trump tear this party apart. Yes. Please, please let Donald Trump waiting for this moment. I, I, I literally think that the Democrats can fundraise off Trump. Now, we've been wrong before. We thought he could have before. True. But after January 6th, I don't think he's beatable. And um, if the Democrats take a shellacking this November, Jody, it's going to be the worst nightmare for yes. Kevin McCarthy. Because yeah. it's going to be two years of the GOP fighting each other. Yeah, because he doesn't have uh, the ovaries that a Nancy right. Pelosi does to get his caucus in order. He's a man with no control over his own caucus. And that <laughs> happens to a lot of guys his age. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't make me laugh. No, you're funny. Um, and like you said, that Joe Biden now is, is beating Trump in a recent poll by four points. In spite of all of the media saying everything is terrible, it's awful. You know, when oh, the, know. The, the, yeah. the unemployment's down to 1969 levels again. Yep, I, yep, yeah. I have, it's clickbait. Yeah, I mean, I have friends that say, oh, the economy's terrible. It's like, w and they both have really good jobs, mind you, and never got laid off during because they were lucky. And it's like, wait a minute. Okay, yes, gas prices are up, but that has nothing to do with Joe Biden. Gas prices are down this week. Exactly. You know, with the gas prices thing, number one, gas prices are so much higher in all of our capitalist allies right now. I, I mean, know. gas prices are so much higher in Germany and Japan and in the UK. And gas prices are going down. So I want to see these little baby fascists uh, credit Joe Biden with the drop in oil the same way they blamed him for the rise. I thought we were in a capitalist country. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, and I've had to ask a lot of racist trolls on the air this this week, uh, in capitalism, the president doesn't set prices, right? Right. Uh, but again, they're just, they, they're tucker brained and they think that Keystone Pipeline is something that <laughs> creates oil rather than just transports it out of the country. And and by the way, even if it were to be reinstated and we were to use it, it would take a year or two to get online anyway. I mean, it's like... If you drilled in every open inch on American soil today, it would take years right. before it produced any gas. We got 9,600 approved leases on federal lands sitting there, not being drilled, while the oil cartels which no right winger can ever blame. I'm exactly. telling you, I ask these racist trolls when they call my show, I'm like, do you ever blame the oil company? 
for high gas prices ever? They can't. They haven't been instructed to by their fascist media. So, you know, like they're sitting on 46 billion in profit and they used 40 percent of that to do stock buybacks to make their executives more rich. They're the bad guys. They've always been the bad guys. And the only question has been how much do they own or control any particular president? Uh, you know, Joe Biden's going to look great by re-election time. When you look at how much he saved the economy, when you look at how much better the numbers are and the vaccination, and, and, and as awful and as poorly managed as the Afghan withdrawal was, he's going to look like the only man Absolutely. alive who could have done it by 2024. Absolutely. Oh, Travis is raising his hand, and it always scares me when he does that. Yes. Uh, Clarence Thomas has been released from the hospital. Oh, oh, okay. oh I oh, am so great. happy for him and Thoughts his and family. Thoughts and prayers, Clarence. Now he's got to go home to Ginny. Thoughts and prayers, bro. Thoughts <laughs> and prayers. And you know she's drunk. She's yeah, she's drunk. It's I mean, it's late for her. It's mm. almost eleven o'clock her time. I know. Look, I, I get it. I I like crazy chicks too. I understand, Clarence. I get it. I get it. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. It's totally yeah. hot. <laughs> um, so okay, I love this. Should be illegal because it's not mentioned in the Constitution. And you checked, and he's right. But that, but childbirth is also not mentioned. So I guess that needs to be banned too. I agree. Mm, yes. Um, having not bore children, I'm good with that. <laughs> can, I, can I ask your advice? I have a question, you guys, uh, okay. about the uh, the Appalachian Lady G, because mm -hmm. yes. um, he's been he's been it's been said by rent boys in the area, and I thank them for their patriotic service that uh, Lady G is the name uh, Lindsay goes by. And my whole take is that Lindsey Graham voted against marriage equality, voted against gay adoption, uh, voted against uh, Employment Non-Discrimination Act, uh, anything that would bring dignity to the LGBT community he has always opposed. Um, and uh, I find whenever we call him Lady G, there's always some folks who are really offended by right, this. And right. I don't want to be controversial. I'm a fan of the debate. Um, is it homophobic to call Lindsey Graham, who identifies as not gay, Lady G, because uh, I view it as attacking his hypocrisy, right. not attacking his sexuality. Uh, but I, I wanted to know if y'all had any opinions on that, because I heard you guys have opinions sometimes. I'm, I'm personally, I'm perfectly fine with calling him Lady G. I'm, yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of it because I'm not a fan of using um, Slurs. Some, someone's, uh, someone's sexuality as an insult. In, and in, Dana's in way, Goldberg was on Team the, Travis for a while, and the, now she's off. The, the one issue I do have with it is, by calling him Lady G, it's demeaning to, it, it's demeaning him to call him a woman. It, but right. it's, which being but, a woman is not demeaning. But it's using right. a sexual orientation as a slur, well, and it's like that the in general, word. I just I'm not a fan of. It's like the P That's word. That's why I asked. Yeah. That's yeah. why I asked. And if you guys can give me a a, a, a gay card to, to <laughs> carry with me, I'd appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah. but just let, I, just I tell him I said it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> He'll carry a picture of both of oh, you. Oh, Travis Bone, noted gay. Yeah, he's noted gay. Fine. He's the noted gay of the Stephanie Miller show, along mm -hmm. with the other noted gay. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, yeah. noted gays. I'm so just, uh, so I'm even in the gay community, a well there's a well-documented, confused person. So yeah. thank you. I'm even even in the Jason. gay community, that there's a there's a split over whether you know it's it's appropriate or not. And whether like, yeah, I mean, and listen, as, as far as being like in the closet, I I grew up in the '80s. I have no problem with that. It's a personal choice. Mm -hmm. People come out with if you are a closeted homophobe who actively works to make the lives of LGBT people harder in this country, yeah. then all bets are off. I agree. You know, if you're I'm legislating. Not a fan of yeah. outing. I'm not a fan of outing at all, but no. if you're actually working against the community, then yeah, bro, we're going to drag you out into the light. Someone right just needs on. to cancel subscription to Barely Legal Union Soldier magazine. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and on that note, John, lovely to see you as always, sir. Yes, Have a wonderful, uh, wonderful weekend. Yes. Uh, wait, wait, uh, What's going on with your show? Your podcast. I guess yeah, we're gonna we, we soft launch this week, so we're gonna soft announce um, for fans of the Sanity <laughs> Cast. Uh, we're now gonna be bringing you six days a week a brand new podcast. Uh, the guy who's uh, trying to kill me for the insurance money uh -huh. uh, is calling it the John Fugel Sang Podcast, what? and every day you will be able to hear. Um, a 30, 35 minute version of last night's Sirius XM Great. broadcast with right. all of our guests, all the celebrities, all the comics, all the journalists, all the politicians. Uh, and that's available on Stitcher and Google and, and, and Apple. If you already subscribe to Sanity Cast, do nothing. You're already getting it. There should be a flare up down below. But otherwise, uh, you can check out what we're doing every night on Sirius XM. That's Sweet. the John Fugelsang podcast. Well, Yay. I'm so glad you got the name John Fugelsang because I'm sure that was a tough one to get. <laughs> yes. You know what? It's very, it's very, it, that, that is a, a very common name in uh, uh, Denmark bordellos. So yeah, it was tough to get it. I had to actually outbid some people. Right on. Well. Right.